welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing six more prompts and create this book too. It's going to be pages 20 through 31. I'm going to start with pages 20 and 21, which say to create an assortment. The instructions are to fill in each box with something different. Years ago, I was part of the Hero Arts card making kit, which even now I still think is a great value. You get stamps and dies and sometimes you get paper and ink as well. Well, these stamps were part of one of those kits and I fell in love with it. It's one of my bigger stamp sets and I love it so much. Because there are so many different types of images in this stamp set, like the little mouse that's a baile folklorico dancer and the mariachi and the piñata and the nopales, I thought it would be perfect for this layout. I started by placing my stamped images inside the boxes. Obviously because these are images that already exist as opposed to me drawing them in, I wasn't able to keep them exactly in the confines of each box, but I was okay with that. I kind of like that they broke outside the line. These two pages almost feel like a scrapbooking page, which I really like. Here my little mice are already placed where I want them and stuck down with my dot liner. For the color scheme, I chose really bright, happy colors like purples and reds and oranges, pinks and greens. For the most part, I used the same markers over and over again because I really wanted it to feel cohesive and like both pages went together. There wasn't a single color that I used on one page and didn't use on the other. Whatever color I would use on one side, I would find somewhere else to put it on the other side. And although it was messy, I kept all of the markers out to make sure I used them all multiple times. Here's everything all colored in. I really like how all the colors complement each other. I think it all looks great. The flowers, the cactus, it just all looks so good to me. I wasn't sure if I wanted to color in the little mariachi mouse the same colors as the dancer mouse but I decided to go for it and I really like the end result. This one says create word illustration. The instructions are to incorporate illustration into a word to show its meaning. I chose a background stamp with a whole bunch of lemons and then I spelt out the word lemon by drawing out the letters. Then I cut out the letters to lay out onto the pages. I feel like I might end up saying this about all of my stamps, but I really like this one and I think it might be one of my favorites. I actually hadn't had a chance to use it yet, so I was really happy to be using it for this prompt. I ended up using my Derwin Intense pencils and I colored in all the letters exactly the same way. So I'm only going to show one letter. The colors I used were Iris Blue 0900, Sienna Gold 0240, felt green 1530 and sun yellow 0200. I ended up coloring the inside of the lemon with the pencil, with the yellow pencil, but only went over the pulp of the lemon with water, so that would be more vibrant. For some finishing touches, I added tiny little dots of liquid pearls in the color gold to all of the letters. The next prompt pages, 24 and 25, say to create a list of favorites. I didn't really make a list. I centered more around my favorite holiday. Any guesses? It's Christmas! To lay down my stamped images, I used my EK Tools reverse tweezers. They were so helpful in allowing me to see what I was doing and where I was laying all the little pieces. As for my scene, I created a little gingerbread cookie scene where 
Gingerbread Cookie is walking Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus out and thanking them for coming over for dinner. They had a delicious dinner of gumdrops and sprinkles. I had so much fun imagining the scene inside this little gingerbread house. I love Christmas so much. I used my Copic markers and I made sure to add some yummy looking candy canes as well as some rainbow candies all around the house and the tree. I kept it pretty simple but I think it illustrated my favorite holiday perfectly. The next prompt was to create randomness and to scatter random things all over the page. I'm not going to lie to you guys, this one was really tough. Not because I didn't enjoy it, but because it took a long time to get it done. And not because I scattered random things all over the page, but because I kept not liking it. First, I decided to go in with my Derwent Inktense pencils. As you can see here, they're already colored in, or watered in, I don't know, but I didn't like them. They didn't seem bright enough for me, so I went in with my Prismacolor pencils. Then I thought I was done. I had my close-up shot and everything, but something still didn't sit right with me. I kept staring at it over and over again. Something just wasn't finished. And what I always think is that if I don't love it, then I'm not done yet. So I kept going. I decided what these pages needed was a story. So I created a background that was all black. And I thought to myself, what's going on here? Why are all these little alien body pieces just floating around? The eyes, the arms, the feet. And I finally thought, oh my god, their planet was destroyed and they were all killed. And now they're just floating around up in the galaxy. Pages 28 and 29 are all about creating shine. The instructions say to figure out a way to make this page shiny. I have this little stamp set that's technically a Halloween stamp set with kitties, but I thought what would be shinier than little kitties trying to create a potion to get rich quick. As you can see, my little kitties have everything they need to create diamonds. They have their potions and their potion books, but I wanted to add a little something to the background. So I drew in a hutch, a rug, and a little frame with their kitty friend in it. For these unfortunate little kitties, I use my Prismacolor pencils, and I call them unfortunate because they're always buying potions and books to get rich, but they're always getting duped by salespeople. So as you can see in this little scene, they did get some diamonds, or I should say, they actually got crystals, but the crystals are salt crystals. Once, they even got a potion to get rich quick, but they ended up turning colors. That's why one of them is pink and one of them is purple now. And the other one that's out looking for more books and potions is orange permanently. Okay, I'm getting way too into this storytelling. As you can see, I really like this layout. With all that done, I wanted to make sure you could see the shine that I created. I used some glitter jelly roll pen, some glossy accents, and I also added some gold glue dots. For pages 30 and 31, it says to create a self-portrait, but I didn't even notice that the instructions said to create a list of things that define me or that make me who I am. Instead, I actually made a self-portrait. I had the perfect little stamp for this. It stamps out a head and some ears, and it also comes with eyes and a mouth and a nose that you can stamp, but those obviously wouldn't have looked like me. I did have to adjust the eyebrows because mine are way bushier than the stamp comes with. After I sketched in my face, I went in with my Studler liner pen and I filled everything out and then I went in with my Copic markers. I did have a selfie that I was referencing and I think I came out pretty okay. I didn't realize that I wasn't filming when I did the hair but I needed to add more anyway. So here it is partially done. Then I just added in some black because my hair is brown black and then I was all done. Speaking of being done, let's flip through the pages I finished today. I created an assortment, created word illustration, created a list of favorites, kind of. I created randomness, created shine, 
and created a literal self-portrait. Next time, I'll be creating an invention, creating a reminder, a scented page, a page within a page, creating color, and creating beauty out of ugliness. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time.